when Pillian was to sleep in. And I did a little. It's like, I don't know, almost six. It's really hard to sleep in when the sun is beaming in through your hammock and the birds are singing. And it's very easy to just lay here, though. I'm a little sad this morning. Um, it's beautiful. This campsite is great. Cool, breezy, relaxing morning. And I'm alone. There's just, there's no one to share it with. And it's so crazy how emotions could be different on one day and the contrast to another so extreme. I can imagine myself sitting here and just truly being in awe of everything that I'm experiencing. And today it makes me sad. <laughs> sad to be surrounded by such beauty and be by myself and not have anyone to talk to. Um, usually there's cell service so I can do a texting conversation with my mom or my kids something like that in the mornings and I don't have that so I think that's part of it uh, you know I compare being here in my hammock to my swing on my my back porch and at least in my swing I can go chat with my mom or say hi to my kids and and I would pick that over this right now I miss them. Good morning. Just sitting in my hammock, uh, getting a late start to today. I scheduled a stop at a hostel and I underestimated my ability to get there. So for the next couple of days, I have to take it nice and slow. And lucky for me, the weather is gonna be fabulous. And it's almost 10 o'clock and I'm still not packed up and on the trail. I am coming into uh, Front Royal and I look forward to the resupply there and the quick stop at Mountain House B&B um, and then I will be on my way. It's 10 o'clock and I'm just starting out. This was indeed a magical place to stay. 10 o'clock is really late for me for starting, but it feels just right. The book that I'm reading gave me, ouch, pucker bushes. <laughs> Some words of wisdom in that he said the greatest prayer is thank you. And so since I'm feeling sad and a little lonely, my prayer is thank you for reminding me how much I love my kids and I miss them and how much I love my home and I miss that too. Thank you. On a lighter note, I sent two items, gear, home, last stop. They were my gloves and my sun hat. And I'm not sure about the sun hat. The gloves I just don't think I'll need for a while and I can have them sent back to me if I do. I still have rain mitts and those will suffice, I believe, because I really think the cold uh, will bother my hands if it's wet and cold. But the sun hat was something I contemplated because I've been mostly in a tunnel, I think, is what they call the green tunnel, and not in extended periods of sun exposure. But that might change. I don't know. There's farmlands in Maryland and Pennsylvania and Virginia. and So I may either look at an outfitter for an, an alternative. The truth is I really don't love mine. I feel it's heavy and bulky. So maybe I would find something else to try um, in the next couple of stops. Oh, there's water. I didn't know that was there. Would have been helpful. Well, maybe not. 
this self-discovery thing is kind of, yeah, it's all kinds of things. So I always say I'm not a gambler. I've never gambled anything. And I find that I gamble every single morning when I leave my campsite. For the first mile or so, I look for other campsites to see if perhaps there was a better one ahead. And so I gamble with my emotions. If I don't if I see something, then I am disappointed, like I lost. But if I don't see anything, then it's a win. And it's, it's a gamble. And I don't know why I do it. Because if I could just think, if I could just not do that, right? And then I could be in the, the win all the time, knowing that I, I chose the perfect spot. But today, I gambled and I won. Last night, um, that campsite was, was great. And there was nothing within a mile or so. And uh, yeah, I won. <laughs> My thoughts yesterday about those hikers out here that are in it for the physical challenge and the fact that that's not my goal leads me into the story of how I got into hiking, which someone had asked me about. I put that, the basics of that in a video in the Wander or the Who is Wilson playlist, which I can link to below. Wow, look at the ferns. Amazing. And the trees. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. So the per the um, person asked if I had grown up, you know, backpacking or camping and no, actually I didn't. I grew up in a farm. I spent a lot of time outside, but we didn't go anywhere because we were kind of tied to the farm. And my um, dad was not really into, um, I guess he really wasn't into leisure in that way. And wasn't, I mean, being outside was the result of doing the thing that he was passionate about, which was farming. It wasn't the desire to be outside. And my mom really liked to be outside and we would wander in the woods a lot but it wasn't about hiking or backpacking or anything like that. The truth is that hiking came into my life similar to how yoga came into my life. And that is through physical exercise. <laughs> yeah. I think I started exercising in that way, like with a routine, with the intent of exercising um, in fifth or sixth grade. I started with sit-ups and push-ups before school. I started playing sports in elementary school too and continued that into high school. In junior high, I think my first um, actual routine, physical fitness routine was Jane Fonda on an LP, you know, like those big, either 75s or whatever. And I would work out to that. And then in high school, I started lifting weights and continued that in college. In fact, my last couple of years in college, I would get up at five and spend a couple hours in the gym every morning. And after college, got into indoor cycling and started to do that regularly. <laughs> Again, at 5.45, in fact, or no, 5, 5.30, 5 5.45, 5, I can't remember, before work. In fact, I lived a couple miles from the gym, and I remember in the winter time, I was so close to the gym, I didn't have time to let the car defrost the windows. And so often, I was driving with my head sticking out the window. You know, I was still 20, so I was um, not fully developed in the brain prefrontal cortex area. So I spent pretty much every day, every morning anyway, at the gym and being in anatomy and um, biomechanics geek I and also broke right I was still in my 20s I 
didn't have any money, decided that I would study, get certified to teach, and then I could get a free gym membership. And I talk about that a little bit on how I financed my through hike, my ability to, um, I guess, get paid or get free stuff by exchanging it, doing work studies and work for stay and teaching classes to get memberships and stuff like that. It was the onset of that. Since I'm not doing very many miles today, I'll walk to this one overlook, Hogback. Uh, not really exciting. Then I collected certifications, spinning, TRX, yoga, Zumba, functional movement, myofascial stuff. <laughs> I continue to do that. Not all of it was physical fitness, but um, mind-body stuff for the next 30 years. The trail is getting really narrow and tight <laughs> with these bushes. Yeah, so physical fitness. That's how I got into the beginning of hiking because then it turned into hiking in the Adirondacks, the, the big peaks, the day hikes. So it wasn't backpacking, it was just hiking up and down the mountains. And during that time, there were a few occasions where I hiked and then camped, but I never backpacked. And then I had kids. And after a couple of unsuccessful times of either carrying them or pushing them, dragging them, kicking and screaming up the mountains, I stopped doing that. <laughs> And hiking kind of fell on the wayside for a while. I still did a few trips here and there. And then, and that included my brother coming out to the Adirondacks and uh, hiking some of the mountains. And he too fell in love with hiking. And while he was 600 miles away or so, decided to hike the Appalachian Trail. And in 2015, he did. <laughs> if you want to see his adventure, I'll, I'll post a link below. His documentary is, is really good. It's, he's funny, entertaining. And so I encourage you to, to watch it. Sharon too, my sister-in-law. They did a really nice job. Anyway, so while he was hiking the AT, he came through Connecticut where I was living. And the kids, my husband and I, jumped on the Appalachian Trail for a couple of hours. But before we did that, we picked up those smelly hikers and brought them to our house for showers and to feed them. It was something I won't forget. Not only did they ruin my tan cloth car seats, I don't know why I ever thought tan cloth car seats were a good idea, especially since I had kids. I was a mom for goodness sake. Anyway, I also got to hear the stories about their through hike, their adventure, the people they were meeting, the community, and that's where it started, my desire to hike the trail.